Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Outdoors. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. Behind me is our 2022 GeoPro 16BH travel trailer. And today I'm gonna to give you a full in-depth review. So here's how I'm gonna to structure today's video. I'm gonna start out by talking about why did we choose to purchase a GeoPro after having some other trailers in the past. Then I'm gonna take you on a tour, show you the features and talk about some of the specs. Then we're gonna go through the pros and cons, talk about some of the issues I've had with the trailer. And finally, then we're gonna end uh, and I'm gonna show you a few of the little modifications that I've done. So this is gonna be pretty fun, I think pretty interesting, so I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, so why did we purchase a GeoPro? So if you've seen my channel in the past or other videos, I actually have two YouTube channels that got split up about a couple years ago. Uh, we've had everything from folding A-liner style trailers to an R-Pod. We've had the Lance travel trailer, 1685, which I have some videos on. And now we ended up with the GeoPro, so why? Well, here's the short story. I switched tow vehicles to a smaller tow vehicle. We bought a Jeep Gladiator a couple years ago, and it was having trouble pulling the Lance 1685. The Lance was just a little bit too large, a little bit too heavy for the Jeep. So we wanted something smaller and lighter. So we started to look for smaller, lighter trailers that were still decent quality and had some of the good features that we wanted. And GeoPro really came up to the top of the list, uh, and I'll get into some, some of the reasons why in a minute. The GeoPro is very, very light uh, for its size. This trailer weighs in around 3,200 pounds uh, before you add water and things like that. It's also very short. So you can see it's a small trailer. The total length of this trailer is about 18 and a half feet, which is very, very short. If you know anything about travel trailers, you're gonna understand that that's very, very short. So it's small, it's light, it's compact. It's also about six inches narrower than a normal travel trailer, uh, which means that when you're towing, especially if you're towing with a mid-sized truck, like a Gladiator or a Tacoma, like I was doing, you can see behind in your mirrors a lot better than a standard eight foot wide trailer. Another reason we chose the GeoPro is that it has Asdell construction. So Asdell is a material that they use in constructing the walls. It's not wood and it's better for insulation. It's a higher quality and also it uh, resists water damage. If you ever were to have water intrusion, it's a much better construction to have versus the typical wood construction or what people might call like stick and tin construction. So we definitely like that. Now, I will admit right up front, this is not as premium or as nice of a travel trailer as our Lance was. And as I go through this video, you're gonna see some of the reasons why. All right, so let's jump in and take a tour around the 16BH, keeping in mind this is a 2022 model. Let's take a look at the stickers here. So we can see here our tire pressure information, things like that. Gross vehicle uh, weight rating, 4,486 pounds. Uh, let's find our weight. Where's our weight here? Here's our tire pressures. Here's our dry weight. So dry weight of this trailer is 3,271 pounds, length 19 foot as manufactured. So with a dry weight of 3,200 and a GVWR of about 4,500, that gives us about 1,300 pounds for water, cargo, propane batteries, and things like that, which is not too bad. And I think a little bit better than our Lance actually. All right, so let's take a tour starting at the front. You can see you've got some marker lights up there on the top. You've got the GeoPro logo. Uh, due to the bike hitting, my bicycle hitting there, I had it mounted on this bike rack. It kind of rubbed into the finish a little bit. The glass front window, I really do like the glass front window. Really makes the trailer look more modern. And when you're inside, it makes the trailer feel a lot larger than it is. This is a docking light up front, LED. You can see the decals. We've got the diamond plate down low. Uh, the frame of the trailer, which is pretty stout, you have a cover for the twin propane tanks. Uh, I've got a battery box here, uh, which can fit two standard batteries, but because I'm using a lithium ion battery, it can only fit one, but I'll get to that later. I installed a bike rack. This is the Lippert uh, Jacket bike rack, and it's not all assembled here, but I have a piece that goes on here. I'll put a photo of it and it sticks up and you can mount bicycles. It's okay for lighter weight bicycles, but if you're gonna carry e-bikes, it's really not heavy duty enough for that. And it can be difficult to lift up onto that rack. 
but that, that'd be a topic for a separate video. You can see I've got my hitch attachment point. So I use an Anderson hitch, which is gonna be a topic of a separate video, but yes, I do love the Anderson hitch. It's easier to use and a better design than traditional uh, weight distribution hitches. Something I like here on the GeoPro, you've got this holder for your power cable, for your tow vehicle, the chains, kind of nice to keep that stuff off the ground. Um, all the standard stuff you can see here, these things that always get lost, so you always want to have spares of those. It comes with a Lippert uh, powered tongue jack with a light here, so you can hear that going up and down. I do like having a power jack. It is slow, but it's nice to have that instead of having to crank it by hand. The trailer uses these really kind of cheap scissor jacks. They're not really weight bearing. You're not supposed to bear the weight of the trailer on jacks like this or just for stabilizing it for movement. They work okay, but they're really cheap and I'd like to see something a little bit heavier duty. Working our way around to the passenger side. The pass-through storage is for such a small trailer, it's pretty generous. So this passes through, you can see it does, they do have like the ducting for the heater and stuff here. So you gotta be careful not to like break that. Um, but I keep the, this is kind of a mess cause I just went on a trip, but I keep tables in here. This is my tool bag, my hitch stuff, uh, drill for the jacks. I've got my entry mat, I've got a broom, I've got um, chairs and stuff like that in the other side, but we'll go around to the other side. It does have magnetic keepers for the, uh, door which I like so it doesn't you know slam it doesn't have the nice doors that like the Lance trailers have but that's obviously you're not going to get that at this price frameless windows which I do appreciate just makes the trailer seem more modern this is a solar connection if you want external solar we're going to get on the roof in a minute I'll show you the solar that's already on the trailer this is a latch for the door keep the door open uh, you can see the awning here which is a power awning with a light and it's a good quality awning we use it all the time. The steps, I personally cannot stand this kind of step. I hate them. The reason is, is that first of all, you try to put your step up like, okay, I'm gonna put my step up like this. Boom, hit your door, interferes. So then, if I had to go like this, they dump, you see what's happening? They dump dirt and sand into the trailer. I just don't like this kind of step. I prefer the old style of step. It just folded up underneath. I thought that was a much better design. And one of my projects is to get rid of this stupid thing. Um, also, you have to level it because it's got these legs. And when every time you repark the trailer, you have to mess with those legs to try to get it, see how it's flopping. So, and if, if it's too high, if it's a little bit angled too high like this, the door actually won't shut. So anyway, I hate these steps with a passion. The door thankfully does have um, a friction hinge so that in the wind it won't uh, slam shut on you. You've got a screen door here of course as well with the sliding takeout window here when you want to order hamburger um, from your spouse. Handle of course, you've got the different stickers here, that's all fine. You can see the Asdell that I talked about. Saving our environment by driving around a travel trailer with a truck, I don't think that's really the case. Um, Side of the trailer, not much more to see. You do have a clip-on thing here. This is clips on the grill that they include. It's actually a griddle and a table, which is kind of cool to have that. Uh, the tires and wheels, so this is gonna be when I talk about the cons, but single axle trailer, there's some downsides to that. It comes with crappy, horrible uh, Westlake tires, which are probably a blowout risk, and so I'm gonna change these out for Goodyear Endurance, but they are good size. You also notice that the trailer is also pretty high up off the ground. That's another reason that we did buy the trailer is that it doesn't scrape. Like the whole trailer is nice and it's almost like it's lifted up pretty high. All right, you can see here propane if you want to connect a fire pit or that's where you connect your uh, griddle that they include. You see this triangle piece hanging down, that's to protect your jacks when you scrape, like leaving a driveway, uh, it'll hit that instead of the jacks. But with this trailer being so high, I haven't really had too much of an issue with that. We've got a storage here. Now, this was an exterior fridge. This was, a, I think it was a, what's that Best Buy brand? Um, Oh, what is it? Uh, anyway, it's a cheap brand of, of fridge, and I'll put a photo of it here. It never worked. It didn't work on delivery. My told my dealer it wasn't working. They didn't care. They just wanted me, they wanted to send me home with the trailer and get me out of there and make their money. They didn't care that it was broken. 
and, um, and so I didn't want to have to go back and fight about it. So I just pulled it out, threw it away, and used it for storage. So I keep a propane fire pit in here, I keep the griddle, I keep the table, some flip-flops, other stuff like that. I'd much rather have this as storage than have the extra fridge because the interior fridge is enough for our needs. But it does kind of suck that I had to immediately, that didn't work, and I had to pull that out and throw it away. That was kind of, kind of what I've come to expect from the RV industry and RV dealers, however, which are all terrible. Um, one thing I almost missed, the trailer did come with this tire monitoring system. There's a little panel that I put on my truck's dash and it monitors the tire pressure in each tire wirelessly. That is a nice feature because with a single axle, you really are concerned about tire, tire issues or tire failure or overheating. So I do like having that. And that did come with the trailer. Now, moving around to the back. So you can see, let's start at the bottom. Well, the first thing is, what do you not notice? There's no hitch. So you can't put a bike rack on the back. That's a huge problem. I think they did add a hitch maybe for 2023. Uh, you could put a bike rack back there or whatever. Not having it is really a pain and it's very frustrating. So this is the rear storage, which I use for all. I use, I have a, my sewer hose, water stuff, pressure regulators, gloves, which you need when you're doing your tanks, water hoses, all that kind of stuff. The little panel, there was a wooden divider panel that screwed in here to cover up this plumbing, um, but that broke off because trailers are built like junk. Um, and you can see in here, that's the water heater with that um, insulated foam. And up here, you can see this thing that moves around like that. That's mounted really well, isn't it? I mean, come on guys. That's the water filter system, which we do actually use and it filters the water pretty well for drinking. So we do like that. Just make sure to sanitize your water tanks every so often. So you can see this is the water filter system for the trailer. Um, you can also use a filter if you're using city water hookups, but this is what we use when we're using the water tank for drinking and it works, it works fine. I just wanted to dry that out so we don't get any mold or anything like that. It's the typical cheap, you know, cheap hinges and latches that always come loose and you kind of need to adjust. I mean, just typical junk quality that RVs have. I'm not trying to be negative, you guys. This is just, this is like the fourth travel trailer we've had. And for the most part, they're all kind of suffer from these issues. It's just the way RVs are. LED lights, uh, cornering light, I mean, marker lights, uh, camera. So it's pre-wired for, I think it's Furion camera. And then, of course the dealer sells those for some crazy markup, like $700, when you can just go on Amazon for like less than $200 and get a Halo View camera with a little $5 adapter that plugs right into it. So that's what I did. So that's a Halo View camera, which I recommend. And don't just don't buy anything from the RV dealer. That's my honest advice, sorry. Just don't buy any extras because they're all marked up like 300% and it's just crazy profit for them. And they're not even any better than the stuff you can really buy on Amazon. So, all right, the ladder, the ladder is, it looks a little flimsy. It doesn't look too stout, but I've been okay with it. I weigh about 200 pounds or about 90 kilograms. All right, so hope your health insurance is intact right now. You guys wanted me to get up on top. I told you I was gonna get up on top, so here we go. So now you can see the roof of the trailer. So it is a walkable roof, which is very nice. When we had an R pod, it was not, that kind of sucked. You can see this comes with the trailer. This is a 190 watt solar panel, which in combination with the lithium battery that I've gone to is uh, great for boondocking with this trailer. It provides enough trickle charging to keep your fans and your fridge and lights and stuff like that going. Just keep in mind, you can't run things like air conditioners or microwaves uh, off of something that small. So the vent fan has that cover over it, which is good for bad weather. You can see up there, you've got the TV antenna, some uh, plumbing vents, and you can see the air conditioner as well, which does stick up. It sticks up pretty tall. I wouldn't call that low profile. So you're gonna have to be care. It's not a tall trailer to begin with, but just keep, my keep in mind that you've got that thing sticking up on the top. You can see kind of how they did the sealant. Seems like pretty good, like it seals up pretty well, but um, you know, again, if you're gonna have leaks, this is one of the areas that you tend to find that. 
Okay, we didn't die coming down the ladder. That's good. All right. Coming around to the driver's side of the trailer, uh, you can see this is left over from some sticker the RV dealer had on it, of course. Water heater in here. Make sure that's make sure that's purged. Water heater is a six gallon water heater. It's not a tankless water heater. Power connection, uh, city water connections, uh, antifreeze inlet, black tank flush, TV connections, outside shower, which never really use, water tank fill. Down here, this is your gray water outlet. Uh, the fresh water tank drain is that guy right there. And I have a little label, fresh water drain. The slide system, which I'll show you when we go into the trailer. I do like how they made use of all the space. So they, they did use every inch of space they could find in terms of storage. So I do like that. I keep the power stuff in here, you know, converters. I keep the uh, Anderson leveler and wheel chalk for this side right here. So that's easy when you're setting up your campsite. Sewer outlet, which I need to fix. If you see this thing is, this bracket keeps snapping. I've already fixed it once or twice. It keeps breaking because it's cheap crap. So that's something we need to deal with. Uh, the outlet here for the furnace. This is the docking light switch. This is the other side of that front pass-through storage. So you can see I've got camping chairs in here, parts of my bike rack, things of that nature. Another window here. They did a pretty good job putting in as much windows as they reasonably could in such a small trailer. All right, entering the trailer, we do have the keypad entry, which I do like having that because instead of getting out your key, you can program a personal code to get in and out. Uh, just make sure you always bring your key with you because the batteries in this can die. And if the battery dies, how are you gonna get into your trailer unless you have the key? So keep that in mind. Um, more evidence of how cheaply built these Forest River trailers are. I mean, come on guys, look at this. Look at this, this is the blind for this window. I mean, it's just such, this is just crap, I'm sorry. Like RV industry just needs to do better. But we keep buying them, so I guess it's our fault. All right, coming in to the trailer here. And again, like I said before, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just showing you an honest walkthrough. This is probably the most honest trailer walkthrough you're ever gonna see. All right, coming in here, let me get the lights going in here before we do our tour. Uh, I'm gonna put the slide out. So here's, here's a control panel here, tank levels, which usually aren't accurate, water pump switches, heaters, stuff like, it does have tank heater pads, but you'll drain your battery. Don't, don't do that if you're boondocking. Light switches, porch awning, step light, which turns on down there. Let's put the slide out. Okay, so it uses the Schwintech slide system, uh, which has been reliable for us. We've had this on other trailers. Um, as long as a mouse doesn't eat the wiring, which I had happen on the Lance, but that's, that's another story. Let's turn on the rest of the lights. So the lights have individual controls, but also they have a master switch at the entry. So I think that's all. Let me turn on the bathroom lights. Okay, now you see how there's a master light switch here so I can turn everything off and on. And then when they're on, you can individually say, okay, this is too bright. I want that one turned off. These are really bright lights. They're almost too bright at night. So you use some, uh, you know, different kind of light for nighttime. Uh, let's see. At the entryway, you've got the storage here. This used to be a little uh, storage thing, but the problem was stuff would drop behind it. Like we dropped the TV remote and now we can't get it because it's inside this wall. I won't mention who did that, <coughs> Maggie. Um, Storage, that's the fuse box down there. Carbon monoxide switch so you don't die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Speaker, you've got the little radio thingy, which I never really use. This is the Wi-Fi Ranger, which is a Wi-Fi booster, which I've never really found useful, to be honest. I put all these hooks up. Um, 
something I like to do. And these cargo nets don't come with it. I bought these on Amazon and bolted these in. I like having extra storage. Typical stuff like these are loose and they fall off. That's almost all RVs that I've seen. The windows are okay. Um, they go out like this with these cranks. They seem to be fine. Uh, you've got the storage up here, which is great for bedding or your kids' toys or whatever you want to put. Pretty good that they managed to give you storage up there. These nets are mine again. The front, front uh, drapes there and that front window, you see how it really makes a trailer feel bigger than it actually is because it lets in more light. This is their emergency exit window there. That one's getting pretty loose. Now, so the 16BH, talking about the beds and the seating. So this is the dinette, which I'll put up in a second. And back there, you have twin bunks. So you have one, two, three beds. This is like a, kind of equivalent to like a queen size. And those are, well, these are tiny. These are like whatever, single or whatever you call them, really small, but they're fine. I actually sleep in that one a lot and it's actually perfectly fine. So anyway, let me put up the dinette. So to make up the bed, you've got all these pads. The problem with these pads is that they have no density to them. They're so cheap that when you sit, when you sit down your butt on these things, they just collapse and you feel like you're sitting on wood and the heavier you are, the worse that it is. So let me put up the dinette. I'm going to have to Put the camera down here for a second to do that. So it's three poles. You've got to do three poles to do this and then Get the table up on here, which you kind of have to crawl underneath to see what you're doing. Okay. And voila, embarrassing moments later, you have a dinette. So you can sit here. It's actually pretty decent size. Um, I like to sit back kind of here for my legs up in the morning while I'm having coffee. And again, they make, it makes the trailer feel bigger than it is. And you have all the windows around you. So the dinette's pretty good, pretty useful. Again, you just have the really soft cushions, but you can put some pillows to get more comfortable. So during the day, we typically have it set up like this. Um, if you want to take a nap and want to use the bed, the downside of these smaller trailers, of course, is that, well, you don't have the permanent bed, so now you have to make up the dinette every time you want to use the bed, which is kind of a pain. But that's the pros and cons of, you know, getting a smaller trailer with a convertible bed setup. All right, let's talk about the fridge. It's a Magic Chef fridge freezer. It's good size for being a small trailer. I'll show you the size here. But here's the problem. The way that it's delivered, it doesn't get cold enough. It only gets to like 45 degrees or something like that. And in the summer, it's not nearly cold enough. So what you have to do is, and I found this online, you have to take this thing apart and there's like a screw under here. The thermostat doesn't matter. You have to take this apart. There's a little screw that sets the actual temperature and makes it colder. So you have to do that when you get the trailer because otherwise your food doesn't get cold enough. Um, so again, I don't know why why it's done that way because it's super frustrating microwave down here which is also a convection oven that works fine the burners yeah glass top burners no problem there three burners they don't have ignition so you have to get a lighter to light them which is just annoying and cheap you can see the light here for the uh, vent hood you do have a fan you have to open it on the outside this is a good place to keep your cutlery accessories things like that up here sink it does come with this a kind of a dish uh, drainer thingy which is nice to have you fold that up then you've got your sink which is decent size um of course you know this looks like it's going to break off at any minute typical cheap rv stuff this is already broken so this is a pop-up uh, outlet uh, and usb but this is powered by the inverter talk about the inverter in a minute uh, this it's supposed to drop down and be flush, but of course it's broken because it's junk because it's the RV industry. Um, but it does work. The power outlets work. Let's look at the bathroom. I put this net up here, the storage net. Again, that's like an Amazon thing. So 
The bathroom is something that did kind of draw us a bit to this floor plan. It's a pretty good sized tub. So if you have little kids, you've got a tub there. Pretty decent sized shower. This is bigger than the shower in our Lance trailer, actually. For such a small trailer, it's pretty good. You've got a skylight. And I can stand up in here um, just fine. And I'm five foot 10 or 1.78 meters tall. Toilet. You do have porcelain uh, toilet, which is kind of surprising. Um, so that's nice to have. Works as you would expect. Bathroom storage, mirror, bathroom sink, more storage down here, storage in there. They, they utilize space well for storage. More up here. Fantastic fan with four settings and the cover and it locks and everything like that. You've seen that on every RV out there. So the bathroom's pretty good. Close that up. Uh, storage under the sink. So pots and pans. This Here's another example of the, um, so this panel is about to break off. Um, you can see here, it's just, that's the quality that you get with Forest River. It's just not good. Sorry, um, typical RV stuff though, it's not uncommon. You get this pantry storage here. So coffee makers, whatever you want to store, you've got three levels here, which I mean, pretty good to have this. Um, nice to have down here you've got this well i guess that panel broke off too you have uh access to some of the electric and plumbing and this little cover so you can kind of put something in here at an angle but you wouldn't want to put anything heavy you've got that twin storage drawers under the bunks which are nice to have the bunk beds this this i put up thermostat i changed this out that, we'll get to that in the cons because the standard one was just not any good. So I put in a digital one. It was really cheap. Go Power Solar Controller for the solar. That works well. Outlet. The upper bunk, which you do need a ladder to get to. So the ladder hooks on here. It's a bit uh, awkward to get up into this upper bunk, but I've actually slept up here, but it's more for kids. So you can see the, the size of it. I've got our bedding back here. Um, and then at the at the head at the end of the bunk here you've got uh, storage which is great if your kids up there and they want to have their snacks or their tablet or whatever whatever your kids want to do you've got that um, the lower bunk is a little bit more spacious and you have this window so i like this window because i sleep in this bunk a lot and i can have fresh air i can look outside i've got two, two, two storages here USB outlets on the bunks, I should mention. You've got USB here, and you've got USB in the upper bunk. I also forgot to mention that there's also USB up here by the TV. Speaking of the TV, we didn't cover that. The TV has, the TV has a swing mount like this, so I can swing it around and view it from the dinette. It's, the TV is really too small, but they didn't have much room to work with. And we use like a streaming stick, you know, for our TV. So, no real, I mean, it's fine. It works. Let me try to show you somehow here uh, how I get in the bunk. So it's not too bad. And I'm a full size, you know, full size adult male. Kind of crawl in like this. And now I'm laying down in the bunk. I find it very cozy and very comfortable. I can look out my window here and you can see... I'm five foot 10 and it's still long enough where I'm not hitting my feet. So I, I like this spot actually. Getting out, I just swing around. You kind of hit your head a little bit on this part if you're not careful. AC, it's a Coleman Mach. I don't know what the BTUs are. I think it's 13.5. But being a smaller trailer, it cools the trailer very well. It doesn't have a thermostat. Well, it does actually right here, this old fashioned one but it's not controlled from that. It's controlled through this only. So you have fan, low cool, and high cool. It pulls like 10 amps on low, 12 amps on high. I don't know what that is in watts, uh, but I run it off a Predator 3500 generator if we're boondocking. It cools the trailer very well. The furnace is actually down in here. So it blows out, I believe, from there and from there. Those are the only furnace outlets you get. It's not ducted through the trailer, so you don't get heat in the bathroom or heat back here. And the furnace, this thing only serves to control the furnace.
All right, it's time for the pros and cons. Now I've kind of ended up covering all this when I went through my tour, cause it's hard to avoid those things. But let me just breeze through this really quick as a summary. What are the pros? Uh, they utilize all the space for storage and living and I think it's pretty good. The power converter that comes with the trailer is solar and lithium compatible. So I didn't have to change out the power converter when I converted to a lithium battery. We'll talk about the battery in a minute. It's lightweight, uh, the trailer 3,200 pounds, you can tow with a large, an SUV or a smaller mid-sized truck. It has a narrow body, which so you can see behind you when you're towing. It uses the Asdell, which we've talked about for construction instead of wood walls. Uh, the interior decor is light and bright and it feels larger than it is with all the windows. It's got that large shower, tub, and bathroom. So those are the pros. What are the cons? Now again, we've kind of talked through a lot of this already. So the cons, number one, the fridge doesn't cool properly and you have to make an adjustment, but it's pretty easy to do if you just look up the YouTube video on how to do that. Uh, panels coming loose, trim panels coming loose, I showed you that. The exterior fridge that never worked from day one and the dealership didn't care and denied it was a problem. The dump pipe bracket was broken on the black tank. Uh, the tires are cheap and probably a hazard to replace those with Goodyear's. The cheap thermostat that was like from 1970, so I changed that out with a digital one from Amazon for like 30 bucks or whatever. The poor seating, the poor mattress foam. So not only are the uh, cushions here very thin and kind of uncomfortable for sitting or for sleeping, but actually the mattress pads on the bunks, I didn't mention that. They're really just not very comfortable and your back kind of hurts after sleeping. So I'm probably gonna change those out for something else. Also, another con that I didn't mention is that the, the supports here you can see for the, for the table that makes into your bed are not strong enough. A lot of people have had these break off and you can kind of feel things shifting and, and you can hear it creaking. So just waiting for the day that that breaks off. And the final con, obviously I knew this going into it and this is what you get with a small trailer. But if you're looking at these small trailers, a single axle trailer, number one, they don't tow as well. They don't tow in a straight line. They always wobble around because single axle. And if you do have a blowout or a tire failure, you're gonna have a pretty bad situation compared to if you have a tandem axle trailer, then you're gonna be able to get down the road if you have a single tire go bad. All right, let's cover some of the mods that I've done. I showed you all the netting and kind of hooks. That's basic stuff. I put them everywhere just because you need that. I don't come with any of that stuff. Shower head, you probably, if you watched RV videos, this is an oxygenic shower head and that's a necessary improvement. It just saves water and gives you a better shower. Another mod that I did, which I think is really important is I took the standard cheapo lead acid battery the you know RV battery out and put in a lithium battery. I'll put below in the link the battery that I'm using. I got it from Amazon. I didn't get like the expensive Battleborn battery, so it is an Amazon one. Um, I'm sure it's from China, uh, but it does have a thermal protection circuit, so it won't charge below freezing, which is an issue with lithium battery. So it does have that protection circuit. It was tested by that battery guy website who always tests and ranks them. I forget what that is, but I'll link that below. I'll put those details below. It was around six or $700 for the battery. And I believe it's a hundred amp hour is what I went with. I went with a single 100 amp hour battery for a trailer this small. And I'm not running through a huge inverter. I'm just using the stock thousand watt inverter, which I never really use because I just charge things off a of 12 volt during the day and everything runs off 12 volt. Uh, just don't use the inverter and the inverter cannot run the microwave or the AC obviously. So I don't use that. But the battery, um, I can run the furnace like all night when I'm boondocking the fan all night and I only go down to like 80% uh, on my battery. So it's a great system and combined with a 190 watt solar panel, it recharges in a couple hours in the morning when the sun comes out. And then I have a 3500 watt Predator generator. If I need to, if I'm boondocking and I want to run the AC or the microwave, I just turn on the generator, which is pretty good and pretty quiet. One more thing that I did, it's not really considered a modification, but I do use an Anderson weight distribution hitch. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm not sponsored by anything in the RV world because I do my motorcycle channels, my main thing. Uh, but the Anderson hitch is great. It's super easy to set up, super easy to use. You can adjust the tension a lot better than the spring bars and the old style ones. So I do recommend looking at Anderson hitch, doing a separate video on that coming soon. Now, I know the topic of, well, what kind of vehicle do I need to tow this trailer? So I have other videos on that, which I can link to below. 
but keep in mind the dry weight may be 3,200 pounds, but the GVWR gross weight weighting is 4,500 pounds. So if you have a tow vehicle, you're going to need a tow vehicle with a, with a tow rating of, I would say, at least 5,500 pounds. Because think about it, you don't want to max your tow vehicle out. It's going to ruin your transmission. You're going to overheat. You're going to challenge your brakes and everything like that. Obviously, you're going to need a brake controller if you don't have one. Um, so I'd recommend, you know, 5,500 pounds or so should be the tow rating on your vehicle. So that's going to mean Tacoma would be fine, a Ford Ranger, a Chevy Colorado, some of the larger SUVs with larger tow ratings. Um, you're going to want a pretty strong engine. Um, yeah, so I tow it with a full-size truck now because I went back from the Gladiator. I went to a Ram 1500 Rebel. So now I can easily tow this thing. But I also, I put a motorcycle in the bed of my truck. Um, and I travel to events with a motorcycle and a venture bike in my truck bed, and I tow the trailer behind me for living space. That works really well. I wouldn't be able to do that with a small or a mid-sized truck because the beds are too small in those trucks. So I'm able to do that with the Ram 1500. I'm doing a separate video review of the Ram 1500 Rebel Eco Diesel on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Now I know you're going to also ask, what did I pay for the Geo Pro? So that's interesting. So we. Uh, years ago when we bought our Lance brand new, I think we paid around $34,000 brand new for the Lance. We sold it during the COVID when the prices were high. We sold our Lance for like $35,000. So I think we actually broke even on that, which is never ever happens with an RV. That was a once in a lifetime thing. Then we paid, I think we bought this brand new uh, about a year ago in summer of 2022. I think we paid around $34,000, $33,000, maybe $33,000 plus tax which was a decent deal at the time. Uh, now they're selling these for around 30,000, 31,000 in California plus tax. So prices have been coming down. Of course, RV dealers were saying that, oh, you know, we're never gonna see prices go down. Well, that's complete garbage BS. Just they're trying to keep their jobs. They're trying to uh, sell. They only care about selling stuff that day. That's how they make their commission. So they don't wanna worry about the future. Um, of course, prices are gonna come down. Demand's gonna drop, interest rates are going up. It's harder to buy RVs now. Of course, prices are going to continue to drop. I'm filming this in the spring of 2023, and we are seeing prices drop in the RV industry, and that makes sense. So anyway, and then used, I don't know what this thing is worth now used. It's probably worth like 25000 or something in Southern California where I am. So we've already sort of uh, paid a lot of depreciation with that. Fortunately, we were able to, to pay cash and not do the financing because financing rates are pretty high with RVs, and I don't... Um, well, that's a, that's a topic for another day. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions about the pricing or anything like that, do let me know. So to wrap this review up, I know it's probably been a long video. I hope I thank you for sticking in there with it if you've watched the whole thing. I hope it was useful. I'm only doing these because I'm trying to provide advice for other consumers out there, people like us that are shopping for a trailer. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what's good or bad. Here's the honest truth about the RV industry and most RVs, they're not made very well. So a lot of the issues you saw here are just issues you see in almost every manufacturer. Uh, is Lance higher quality? Yes, it also costs a lot more. Lance trailers, uh, to repurchase the Lance that we had before to get that model new now is something like $60,000, twice the price of this Geo Pro. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, we paid $35,000 for our Lance a few years ago. Um, Airstream, yeah, Airstream are, are nicer quality. They still will have things go wrong because they're still an RV. Just keep in mind, RVs and boats, they always break, they always need money, and they're always a pain in the rear. Just keep that in mind. Airstream's nicer, yes, but it comes at a super premium price point, and they don't have slide outs, and they don't have the room that, these, that some of these uh, trailers have when you've got the slide outs. So... I really didn't mean this video to be negative at all. Just being super honest and transparent about the issues we've had with our Geo Pro. And frankly, if you buy any, uh, any RV from any of the major manufacturers, which there's actually only a few, there's probably like five major RV manufacturers, really. If you've got Forest River, you have a few other ones. They all kind of are built fast. They're built cheap. They want to get them out the door and they're not looking really at the quality. Grand Design is probably a little bit better, but I haven't owned one of those. So I didn't mean this review to be negative in any way, just to be honest. So I hope it was useful. Thank you for watching. I'll put some links below that you might find useful. Otherwise, happy camping, and I'll see you out there.